and after all the information that we had about uh, uh, elements and the JSX syntax, uh, defining a component is uh, comparatively uh, much easier uh, to, to, to understand. Uh, we only have to note that there are two separate syntaxes that can be used in React to define a component. The simple one is just uh, a component is a function, uh, a function that receives some properties as the parameter and will return a React element. Of course, uh, you can create it explicitly or use JSX uh, to, to create it, uh, as we already learned. And this is the return value of the function. Uh, in instead, you, you can define a component as a class. And in this case, you must, uh, um, this class will extend the react.component and will have a render method that, that will re on turn return the same value that the function will return. So actually, they are equivalent. The, the definition of a component as a function is the same as a component as a class because the value returned by render is the same value returned by the functional expression okay you don't see a return expression uh, a statement here because i use the arrow function that uh, by default uh, returns the expression inside okay but you can also have a, a normal function defined here with the function expression and the return statement will be more explicit the idea is the same the component gets some properties and returns uh, some elements mm. the properties are the inputs of the component and the elements are the output of the component that's as easy as it gets a component is just something that transforms that creates constructs some elements an element tree starting or customizing them with some depending on some properties that are received and these properties of course are, are specified by the components uh, um, above them uh, these two methods are mostly equivalent uh, the difference is that one of the ten or one of them received props as the argument and the other will receive props uh, as an instance value so in the, the first one i will use props and the second one i used this dot props because uh, it's an object and so the property will be instance properties um, the real difference is that uh, the, if we define a component as a class, I must define the render method and uh, um, we may define also other methods and we'll see they may be useful in a moment uh, um, when, when, we, when our component will become more complex. In the case of functions, we cannot define additional methods unless uh, we use the uh, hooks mechanism that we'll see in three weeks. Uh, uh, which expand uh, significantly the, the, the scope of uh, function components in React. Um, except when we are using hooks, uh, the only way to define a state uh, in a component is to define it as a class. So the local state uh, may only be defined in a class or in, in with, uh, with special hooks. And in the case of a function, uh, this function should be pure. So it should not have uh, no side effects uh, and the same, of course, uh, will go for the render method there. They should only be returning elements uh, only based on the properties and possibly also based on the state. So what happens here is that uh, whenever we call the React DOM dot render or set state inside an element, uh, the the render method is called uh, render in the case we have a component as a class uh, or just a function if we have the component as a function is called so when we need to render an element and we need to render it when we are explicitly asked to render it or some something changes inside the component then the render method is called uh, with the properties and the return value of this property is an element tree this element tree is composed of nodes that receive their properties computed by the function. So, of course, when I'm returning here something, I can pass to these elements some properties which are computed by my properties. So I'm propagating the properties down with some computation. And so I'm creating an element tree that depends on the properties that are propagating from upper components to lower components. If these components in the element tree are non-native 
we repeat the, these two steps uh, until everything is by calling many times the render method of every component we encounter until we only get DOM nodes. At this point we stop and we add a virtual DOM rend of corresponding to, to the rendering of the component. Once we have the virtual DOM, we should uh, transfer that to the real DOM. So rendering is actually made of two steps. First, uh, ask the components to render themselves recursively until we have the virtual DOM. The second step is reconciliation. Compare this virtual DOM with the actual DOM that we have in the page and uh, pro propagate any differences. Compute a difference and modify the actual DOM only in the places where the new virtual DOM differs from the old visualized DOM. And this is the key for this, the efficiency of React. All the rendering operation will reconstruct, rebuild an element tree from scratch, from zero. Everything you change anything, all the page will be recomputed in the virtual DOM, which is fast. After that, only those the modifications that need to be done in the real DOM are only applied. And uh, React is a very efficient uh, reconciliation algorithm, which is uh, not the general tree matching algorithm that would have a complexity of uh, n to the third power, but uh, it's uh, some heuristics, some simplifications uh, uh, that makes this algorithm uh, run in linear time, in linear time with the number of nodes. So it's actually a one pass algorithm and uh, in which all the modifications to the real DOM are made in one step, in one uh, big update. Uh, in, in, uh, in, in batch method and so uh, the update of the real user interface is uh, also is faster is localized and is also uh, compacted in time because you may have uh, you may update the state of many components but only one update finally at the uh, at the dom level at the browser dom level will happen hmm? so that's why we have this very clean model of rebuilding itself uh, that doesn't have any impact, uh, real impact on the performance. So with this in mind, uh, it's very useful to uh, be accustomed to creating many small components uh, because creating a component is just a, a light way of saying, okay, I, I'm creating a render method that will call another render function, but calling a function is something which is very cheap in JavaScript. So we don't, you should, we shouldn't be concerned with creating too many components. Uh, and every component is done by composing other components. It's just a, a tree of render calls. It's nothing uh, so complex. Mm -hmm. And uh, every component will pass some of these properties to others. It's just passing values through down through function calls. So again, it's not something that is neither complex to understand. Or we are just passing values. Properties are read-only, so they cannot be modified. You don't need to care about the order in which they are called. You, you don't need to care about whether they, are, they will be modified or not because they are read-only. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple, this model, and uh, it encourages us to create many components for every step of our interface. Mm -hmm. And one of the guidelines is that if you, f you, you see that a component is becoming too complex, if the render method is more than two or three lines longer, well, the suggestion is try to split this component in two or three sub-components and uh, have one container component try to call all of, the, all of them. So there are never too many components. The smaller component is, is, the easier it is to debug, the easier it is to reuse also in other contexts. Mm -hmm. So that's the philosophy of, uh, of React. So you will find yourself that you are creating very a lot of small uh, components. And since creating a component in many cases is just defining a function, you don't have any, you don't have to create a new file and define a new name and so on. We are just defining a file with many functions with more components. Some of the components will be bigger, will have more functionality, and those ones will, of course, uh, uh, be uh, defined as classes, for example. And uh, um, since uh, we, we saw that the, we have this efficient algorithm for matching, uh, uh, and it's based on uh, some heuristics. In there's there's one case, one special case in which we must help the algorithm in doing the right choice, in being efficient. Uh, 
and this case in where is when we are generating lists lists of children uh, in a react every time i create a list of children i should provide an extra attribute called key hmm? here key uh, the reason is that if i have a list of elements imagine a, a normal list in html and i'm deleting the third one when matching the differences uh, it's very difficult for react to understand whether i deleted an element or i replaced the third one with the content of the second replaced the fourth with the content of the, uh, the fifth uh, and then deleted the fifth uh, react doesn't have the time the efficient uh, the, the, doesn't want to pay the efficiency of finding the minimal amount of changes it doesn't want it only wants uh, to apply a linear algorithm a one pass algorithm to find uh, one way of reconciling the algorithm so um, that's why we we should provide a key value whenever we create a list so that these five elements uh, will have different keys a react will find uh, will see immediately that the, the, the key corresponding to the third element is missing and the key corresponding to a fourth, el fourth element will be matching between the old and the new version. And so we'll very easily, quickly understand the third element is missing, and so we'll delete it. The same if we are inserting a new element, if the React will see a key which were not present before, we'll just add it in between. Or if we are swapping element, or we, if we are reordering the list, uh, React does only have to match and compare the keys and not the all subtree. So it's our responsibility to, for every list, uh, to define a set of keys uh, that will only be used uh, during the internal uh, matching and uh, reconciliation algorithm inside, uh, uh, inside React. So the rule is that whenever I return a list of items, okay, in the, like in this case, then uh these uh, uh, uh these these items uh, should also have uh, not just uh, uh, what the attributes we need uh, but uh, specifying also a key attribute for them and the key should be unique in the list mm -hmm. so every time i have a list uh every element of the list should have a specific key element so in this case uh, you will get uh, um you see here i'm generating a list uh, by using a map so i'm i have a map uh, sorry an array of numbers i'm calling the number list component with an array of numbers with a parameter number which is an array so i'm extracting numbers from the properties and numbers is the integer array by using map i'm mapping every integer into and a list item okay so list items is an array is the result of a map operation so don't be surprised we are seeing a JSX syntax inside the map it's very common we have some values and we want to create an array of objects of uh, JSX objects uh, one for every element of the array of the uh, array of objects or array of numbers or whatever so it's very common to create to transform an, ar an array of objects into an array of elements uh, in this case we should remember also to pass uh, uh, to um, uh, in, in with this array also the key attributes uh, to these elements hmm? not just the numbers uh, in this case uh, uh, you see that we are not we are just creating list items uh, that are not unique in a way uh, we should create list items with the key attributes in addition to their body hmm? uh, it's just very simple every time the the, basic, the simple rule is that when you use map to create an array of elements remember uh, to have uh, to add the key uh, attribute and what value do we use as a key well usually usually we use something that we already have some identifier some id of the element some unique value that represents the so maybe the the value itself repeated or the id of the object usually if we have an object we already that this object will come from a database it will have a primary key will have an identifier so it's uh, some information that we already have 
uh, the uniqueness of the id uh, of the key sorry is only needed inside the same list so not globally on the page we don't we, are, we don't have to care whether we have many lists on the same page to uh, uh, to create different identifiers these identifiers are only used inside the single list to make the reconciliation uh, be computing faster okay uh, one detail that can be mm, in some way annoying in this is that this key is a property that is consumed by the object but is not available as props so if you try to use props.key to query which was the key value that was assigned to you uh, it, won't be, it, won't, it will not be there huh? it's not uh, it's not uh, available uh, so key is an attribute that is used to define the list but is not available inside the component so if inside the component you really need the id you should also pass it twice one with the key and the other with an id attribute so, or some other attribute so it will be available as props.id if you are passing the id uh, but not as uh, props.key hmm? just remember them it's uh, an extra property that is only used to manage the list but remember that because otherwise you have a, a very strong warning uh, it's not an error i will get a warning uh, but uh, your performance in updating the page will will suffer we see that it will be much slower one final detail uh, about lists again uh, usually lists should be contains uh, contained uh, somewhere so for example here we had a list of elements uh, that is contained inside the ul elements so you um, react components should always return trees of elements and a tree by definition as a single root so all the elements should have a, a main node and maybe other children that compose the tree uh, so if you have an element a list of elements that you want to return you should put a parent on top of them so for example ul for wrapping the list items or a uh, uh, table for wrapping the table rows or a table row for wrapping the, the the table data and so on so only a single element can be returned not a list uh, if you or want only to want to return a list you must in any way to put an element in some cases this element is not needed in the result uh, or it may also be inconvenient because this list should be maybe transformed or combined with other lists uh, and so this container element uh, is something that uh, is annoying for you so there is a special component that is called react.fragment which is just dropped in the translation so if you have a list of items and you don't want to include them into a div because maybe these items need to go somewhere else and you don't want this div uh, polluting them then you put them into a react fragment when you re rendering react fragment the the render will just render the children without any node in between and so that node will be deleted from the uh, html basically from the dom and you will have the, the, the naked list of items uh, if you want hmm? it will not generate any node and there is uh, also a syntax shortcut for react.fragment which is an empty tag so if you are if you see in a component uh, empty tags uh, this means that the component uh, uh, does not uh, um, well th this node will not be included into the react It's just like uh, parentheses for grouping um, a list but it will not generate any new nodes itself so that brings us to the main ideas of the components uh, like what we discussed they are basically variations out of how to do the render function so the main function of components are render now we go to see other details of the components uh, and we start to move towards the dynamic construction of components itself uh, so we need to study a bit uh, how they behaved uh, with respect uh, to their internal properties and uh, to the state uh, let's start uh, with this uh, general picture hmm, that tries to summarize what is happening uh, basically we have a component uh, that we saw that we already said many times that the component takes some properties as input and it generates an element tree this element tree is made of, of other child children that are components by themselves and they also can receive some properties in addition 
uh, real component will also receive uh, other two will also have access to other two um, objects one is the state object and they will focus on uh, today start focusing on today and the other is the context object which is uh, something that we'll study next week uh, basically both context and state are uh, mutable objects objects that can evolve that can change uh, the difference is that the state is private local to this react component and the context is global or can be provided to many components at, at, at once properties you see that there are only a uh, read-only uh, um, information a react component can only receive properties and provide properties to their children state is something that can be read and written by the component it cannot be given to children unless we copy it into some properties hmm. so uh, to summarize uh, uh, properties are data that are passed into the component from the parents also this component will receive these properties from his parent and and so on starting from the general application state uh, is a local object uh, where a component holds some data and only the same component can read and modify the state the state is private to the component no component can ever see read or modify the state of any other component so it's really private uh, it can be modified uh, with a with a proper method so it cannot be modified uh, easily but uh, we'll see how to do that uh, with a special call set state hmm. uh, and every every time that why do we need to to call a special function to change the state because normally when the state changes uh, the component uh, must be re-rendered so react knows that if some props for some reason are changed this component needs to be re-rendered because the props are something external that re react uh, the react engine will pass to the component so whenever this changes this component will be recomputed the element tree will be recomputed and all the trees some properties will be the same so this child doesn't need to be recomputed but some properties will be different and so this child will need to be re-rendered and so on these are uh, the propagation of differences in the properties is something that reacts uh, react can do by itself hmm? because it's an external mechanism of properties passed to a component uh, from component to component but when a, a component updates its state is something that is uh, happens internally to the component and so in some way we should be aware of telling react look i'm updating some state so since i'm updating some state maybe the component needs to change the rendering of the component needs to change the component needs to be re-rendered and rendering the component may have some consequences over the children of the component itself so changing properties will automatically re-trigger uh, um, a re rendering of the component changing the state uh, also will trigger the rendering of the component uh, because when we change the state we are telling also we need to tell react look we are changing the state by calling a special function called set state so we don't uh, we cannot uh, change the state uh, um, manually but we need to call this state context uh, as i mentioned we see that uh, uh, next week uh, uh, is a sort of a a collection of properties that are global and shared between uh, uh, many objects that are use, useful for storing the global state of the application and not the local state of the function the easy part of course are properties properties are just passed down we already uh, discussed them when we saw the JSX syntax uh, uh, every time we say we have a, um, a, um, an attribute in the JSX tag uh, this attribute will be available as a property inside the object hmm? so it's nothing special the, all the properties are read only they may be string of text uh, they may be objects hmm? so nothing more than what we already learned at the jsx level just remember everything i pass the, in jsx uh, attributes will be available in props uh, as uh, uh, properties of the props object we also have a mechanism uh, 
uh, if you want uh, to uh, declare that a given component uh, receives uh, a set of properties of given JavaScript types. Uh, it's optional because, of course, uh, JavaScript is a dynamic language, it doesn't have type checking, but if you want to do some type checking, type checking especially a development type, there is a package called prop types where you can uh, explicitly define the property types uh, that your object, uh, that your component, uh, needs to accept. Hmm? Uh, there are, uh, defines some set of uh, predefined validators uh, that will check the data value uh, at runtime. Um, just to give you an example, and if you are interested, you can check the documentation at the link that I provided in the previous slide. Uh, for example, I want uh, to declare that um, a component uh, needs a property called name of type string. I can just define a prop types attributes. I can define that as a property of the class or as a static, a static property inside the two different ways. I can define the same thing. I prefer the second one because it's clear that it's inside the class, but also the external one is the same. You, we already know all this prototype chain, how it works. And uh, we are defining that uh, name. PropType is just a simple object that is interpreted by this uh, package, prop types. And uh, uh, it defines that uh, the, this variable is an optional string. So prop types dot, it has many properties corresponding to the different data types that can be accepted. And these data types are all the possible data types in JavaScript, it can be arrays or of array of a given type, objects, objects of a given type, strings, and so on. All of these are optional parameters. If I want them to be mandatory param uh, parameters, you can uh, add is required to the type. So for example, uh, prop types dot string dot required means uh, the name attribute is a string and is mandatory so if it's missing generate a warning hmm? but i will leave to you to study the uh, the prop types if you are interested another mechanism that can be used uh, uh, is also to define default props values this done, doesn't require any special package and it's uh, already inserted into into react uh, that uh, uh, where um, I can define the value that a property, sorry, that a property should have if it's not defined uh, in the component call. So in this case, I'm, de I'm defining a, a class property, static property called default props, uh, saying that uh, the property initial value will have the value one if it's not being passed. So if I'm calling counter with the initial value, this will take the actual value one, two, three, four. If I'm calling the counter without this property initial value, that will be defined internally with the value one. And this uh, uh, initialization will come before the validation. So you can have initial value and then prop types checking to check the value, the type uh, or, the, or, the, um, or the presence of a given attribute. Uh, apart from these uh, extra validation or initializations, uh, uh, this is all uh, that we need to know about properties. Uh, they are just simple JS objects that are being passed uh, as parameter to the uh, objects, uh, to, to the components. Of course, the things become more complicated uh, when we deal uh, with the state. So finally, we can define the state as uh, any object uh, uh, inside a, a component that uh, uh, contains local data to the component itself. This state is private to the component and may be mutated by the component itself. So these are the three uh, characteristics uh, of a state, local data, private and, and mutable. So uh, with, uh, contra in contrast with properties that cannot be muted, cannot be modified. Defining a state in a component is quite easy. You just have to assign any object to a, a state a property. So this dot state equal to some object will create a state inside that object um, with a given property, uh, depending uh, on the object that you want to assign. So 
uh, the assignment of a state uh, uh, of a local property state inside the component is just a creation of the state itself uh, in order to define of course local properties you must have a class so you should use the class syntax in react for creating the component you cannot at the moment if you're not using uh, hooks uh, at the moment you, you must use the class syntax and uh, uh, since you are initializing the state uh, when you are creating a component uh, you also need to define a constructor so actually there's a, an, um, a sort of cascade of requirements uh, basically what you want to do is to assign to the state uh, local property of the object uh, of the component uh, some object in this case an object with one property english equal to true for example and uh, so that, like mimicking the, the, ex the exercise that we did uh, last week so in order to do this assignment this assignment should be in the constructor so first of all you should have a class in order to be able to use uh, properties of the object uh, instance properties and uh, the initialization of instance properties should be in the constructor so actually in order to use this uh, state uh, we must uh, first of all decide that the component should be a class component and not a function component and secondly uh, build a constructor and since you have a constructor we must handle the parameters to this constructor usually uh, the properties of the object are passed to the constructor so the constructor is not empty it has one parameter which is a copy of the properties and also we should call the super uh, constructor of the super class uh, uh, which is uh, the constructor or the other component uh, by passing the properties to that so we have this sort of uh, extra code that we need to pay for if we know if we want to to use the state at that point uh, once the state is defined uh, we can use uh, the state everywhere in the component uh, uh, for example uh, for determining how to render the component so in a sense the state is a, as a sort of a like like properties that we can use uh, to modify the render method uh, in, but instead of properties that come from outside the state comes from inside so you in, initialize your, yourself uh, from the outside of this component nobody can know that we have this state variable hmm? uh but this would be uh let's say not very useful because we are assigning something we are assigning just an initial value we are using this value that was assigned in the constructor and never changed uh, the rule is that you should never 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 modify the variable this state dot directly nor any component any object nested inside the state so once you define the state uh, it cannot be modified directly never okay uh, you cannot modify this dot state equal to something else or this dot state of English uh, uh, modify it in some way and if uh, you have an array into the uh, the state you cannot uh, add or modify or remove or uh, um, change the order of the element in the array and so on so imagine this the state should be an uh, uh, immutable ob object except except there is only one allowed mechanism for uh, modifying the state and this mechanism is uh, the function called set state so set state is a, a function defined by react component so you will call it as this dot set state which is inherited by your um, super class and uh, uh, every modification to the state must be requested through set state so uh, um, just uh, uh, look at this word requested uh, set state does not modify the state set state will only request the state to be modified and the real modification will happen will happen later asynchronously so set state is not a synchronous function that will change the state for you set state will schedule the state update for a later time uh, react the react engine should uh, if more well, if it's idle you could you could modify the state immediately if there's something uh, some uh, pending operations the uh, state update may be delayed for a given amount of time hmm. uh, if you want to be sure when the state has been really changed is not after you call set state just so remember after you call set state the state will be probably still unchanged not changed yet will be changed later if you want to be informed or notified or do something when the state is, is really updated 
you can pass a callback function that will be called after real uh, state update so uh, we are sure if you want to be sure that the state already has the new value you should do some computation in the callback but in many cases we just uh, schedule the state update and then forget about that um, there are uh, to update a state we have two methods so we must pass a first parameter called updater and this updater may take two different forms the first form is an object form so uh, if you pass an object like this then this object describes the new state of the function so when the uh, call, uh, when the state update will be run then the property num will be set to two in the state variable okay uh, we we don't want to this uh, set directly this dot state dot num equal to two but we must uh, ask react to change the state and modify this property why do we need to ask that to in order to force a re-render of the component of course hmm? um, the semantics of set state is that of a, of a shallow merge uh, meaning that uh, uh, what we are passing here is not the full state object, but it's a partial state object. The property that we are passing here will replace uh, the properties that are already in the state. If there are some other properties in the state that we are not mentioning here, they will not be changed. So we are only passing what we want to change. Um, and uh, this uh, so this is a merge operation you are merging the current state with the new uh, state that is coming as a argument to the set state function uh, you may also create a new property in the state if that was not uh, present before and uh, this merge is a, sh is a shallow one because uh, um, you should uh, or it only checks the first level of objects so if you have a nested object uh, uh, you should not expect uh, uh, the set state function to understand that the second or third level nesting has changed when the first one didn't and so you should always replace uh, for example if the state has an array you cannot replace uh, an array with a modified version of the same array you should really create a new array and that will be uh, totally replaced so uh, the merging is then is done only at the at the first property level and then all nested objects uh, uh, need to be completely replaced so it's not a recursive operation uh, this is the simple uh, case uh, the more general case is uh, uh, specifying a function so for example i put here an, an arrow function uh, that will uh, return the updated state so instead of, sell, uh, of setting a real object i call a function that will return this object and this function will run with the knowledge of the current state end of the current value of the props current at the time of, of calling the function of course mm -hmm. uh, calling the call this function the updater function not necessarily the set state we'll see that in a second so in this case <coughs> we are doing some computation uh, we are getting the current value of the state that must not be mo uh, modified of course the current value of the properties that are read only so it cannot modify can be modified in any way and we need to return a new object there will be, of course, uh, shallow merged with the current state, as, as before. So this is a more flexible way. Why do we need the, uh, the, the function uh, method? Well, uh, let's see some, some details about uh, this state. Um, for example, uh, just remember uh, that every state change are, uh, is in some way asynchronous. So uh, why... Um, why do we need uh, to call such state? Because usually in many cases something external happened. So the reason uh, why uh, the state needs to change hmm, is uh, uh, normally because something external happened. For example, uh, some user clicked on a button. And so you should, uh, in the example that we have for the buttons with the uh, uh, dual language, uh, after the buttons be clicked, I know that I must change the state uh, of the button the state of the um, the, um, the english uh, property of the state variable of this component hmm? uh, so in many cases uh, the, the the trigger uh, or the component why does the component needs to decide that it needs to change the state because some user action requests some modification 
or in other cases some external action so some rest api delivered new data and so this data should update uh, the value of the state hmm? uh, so whenever an external event occurs the component evaluates the request and may decide to modify the state to request a modification to the state react will take this request uh, and sooner or later will asynchronously uh, execute the request and after the request is executed uh, the component is re-rendered again hmm? so usually the call of set state in 90 percent of the cases is inside some event handler is inside some event handler so remember that this dot set state will be implemented inside the function and so we must be sure that this keyword will really a point to the uh, component object in order to execute the set state and also to read this dot state and so we must uh, be sure that uh, the function the event tender is bound uh, to to the correct object so in the case we are using an arrow function there is no problem because this is inherited from the context remember the rule for this and the arrow functions and the context here is the component object, the component class. So actually, the function handle click will inherit at the, this value of the component. And this is what we want. But in the case of a, of a function, that the function method that we could declare with the method syntax or with the function expression syntax, uh, this function uh, will uh, not be bound by the constructor object. So you will get uh, uh, undefined for this uh, when the event tender is called because the event tender is not called by you. you remember that we, we need to check the call location uh, to understand uh, uh, the value of this and the call and the the, the call uh, place uh, is uh, inside the React code for the event tender inside the DOM basically. Mm -hmm. So this function will be called by the DOM and the DOM of course uh, doesn't have a reference to the to the component. So this will be undefined here, so this will not work, will not, will not work unless you explicitly bind this function. So you are redefining the handle click function, binding that to the this of the, of the object. So uh, for example, inside the constructor, this is really bound to the object that has just been constructed. So you can bind the handle click function specifically to this component. Um, uh, of course, uh, if you can choose, uh, I would I would suggest using the arrow function syntax, so you don't have the the problem of uh, uh, explicitly binding uh, all the all your event handlers. Hmm? Um, okay, so just just remember that we are we are using this inside the function. So always remember the discussion we had of uh, what uh, what's the meaning of this uh, in in the in that in that, in that context. Hmm? and uh, uh, finally a, a consequence of uh, of this state being uh, uh, called asynchronously by um, maybe a click event and scheduling the change asynchronously uh, is that in some case uh, um, the value would be unexpected uh, let's consider this example imagine a counter or component a component a component that contains a counter and uh, the state uh, will contain a property this dot state dot counter okay this counter will be initialized to zero for example and every time a user clicks on a button we just call set state by setting the counter property of the state to the current value this dot state dot counter plus one pretty simple so we expect that to work actually it doesn't work in all the cases because set state uh, you know it's not just scheduling this update for later and it may happen that a second call to set state will be called before the first update is processed so if the user is clicking furiously fast and the uh, react has a lot of, to update, of, of updates to take maybe the update of the, the, of the state to this object has been delayed so there are two updates uh, to the state uh, in, in in queue in the line hmm? in the in the function in the event queue both of them are saying that the counter should be set to the value of the counter plus one but the value of the counter was the value of the counter when set state was called 
so the second time we call set state the value of the counter hasn't changed yet it's still old so instead of saying counter equal to 0 plus 1 and then counter equal to 1 plus 2 it will be 0 plus 1 again because it hasn't been updated yet uh, so in this case it means that uh, some updates uh, will be missed so in, a, in, a, in, an, in some way the when we execute this update this update is relying on outdated information and of course we'll compute an outdated value this happens or may happen uh, when the new value of the state depends on the current value of the state if you are setting a constant like uh, here you don't care of course this contents or something that depends only on the properties there's, there are no problems because uh, if you compute it a bit sooner or a bit later then we, it's depending on some constant values so it's not a big issue the problem is when the new state depends on the old state and so you cannot rely on the old state to have been updated through all the previous calls the only way to be sure is to also schedule the updates of the state so that they will happen in, in order one after the other so all these state updates uh, will be queued um, as functions in the in the event queue in this case you can just define uh, this uh, uh, object hmm, this object to be evaluated not when set state is called but when the function expression is called so there's a slight difference uh, this uh, object here is evaluated when the JavaScript execution reaches the line of set state. So I'm evaluating this, I'm transforming this to a number, and then I'm scheduling that later on, counter will assume this number. In this case here, this is a closure. So I'm uh, uh, setting the, uh, this variable, state.counter, to be computed when the function is executed, over the state that will be passed to this function later on and so this uh, object is be, will be created when this arrow function is executed so when is the time and so always the fresh the latest version of the counter will be used in constructing this object and immediately at this point immediately because we are already in the scheduled time immediately the state is changed so the the simple rule is whenever the new state depends on the current state directly or indirectly always schedule a state uh, function for updating the state uh, this, is, this function simply takes the old state and the props the old state evaluated at the time when the arrow function is executed in all the other cases when the new state doesn't depend on dynamic values so it depends only on constant and properties that it's perfectly safe to use the simplest form while you are using uh, only a single object okay so this is the rule by which an object is able to modify its own state you might remember the exercise from last time when we had a button and the button uh, changed the state from english true to english false every time we click the button that was an easy example where we have a one only component and the same component generates the click event and updates the state so the location where the event is generated and the location where the state is updated were in the same component in no, normally it doesn't happen like that and uh, usually there are some children that generate the event and some ancestor uh, that needs to update the state let's uh, consider a simple example hmm? imagine we have uh, we want to create a very simple application where you can choose your game by using different buttons okay so it's a very ca a custom way of creating a sort of a radio button okay so there is only one button which is selected at a given time uh, this one is selected you can click either of the other three and when you click one of the other three the selected one will change so we have a button that will render itself in a different way depending on the fact that it's selected or not but who knows which is the selected button 
it cannot be just a local choice of the button so for example if i click go here as a game the go might become selected but who is going to tell chess to become unselected so you see that the click event is being generated on go but it needs to also to change some state inside chess this is not possible in react a component cannot change the state of another component never okay so what can we do well the only options is that we move the state not inside a component so from the component we move the state up one level we create another component we may call it a button group and the button group knows which button is selected so the button doesn't know whether it's selected or not because it's the button group that will tell them you are selected you are not selected let's see a, 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 an example we have uh, some three objects that i call the uh, simple button they represent each of these four buttons or five or how many you want and these of course will contain a, a button element hmm? um, a simple button will receive uh, three properties basically it will receive uh, um, ima imagine you have an application that uh, um, defines in some way these four games hmm? it may be a static variable in javascript it may be uh, something that you get from a rest interface or something like that so the application will define the names of the four games and will instantiate will create a button group and this button group uh, knows uh, so now of course it receives the, these names as a property so inside the button group i use i can use this dot props dot names and get the values of these arrays from these arrays i could create uh, an array of simple of of children that are simple buttons and to each simple button i will pass the name for itself so to the first one i will pass the property name equal to chess the second one will receive the name equal to poker the last one will receive the name equal to go and they may also have an index 0 1 2 3 4 and so on so that it's uh, every element knows uh, who is uh, in the in the list of buttons and finally the button group uh, will know which uh, element is selected for example the second one is not selected the first one will be selected so the props that selected for the first one will be true you see that chess is selected the second third and fourth one all the other ones are not selected and the simple button class only needs to uh, create the button by defining the style the highlight the color depending on the selected state true or false and of course populating the button with the current uh, name of the game so we may have a look at this component for example uh, i have a simple button implemented here uh, that is really simple you say that a simple button uh, checks whether it's a selected button or not if it's a selected button then it will create a button of type primary and if it's not selected it's not the, the selected one will render a button of type secondary so the simple button component you see is very trivial it doesn't have any state it's only a way of generating a button with the proper style i'm using bootstrap here as the style uh, classes for defining these classes and uh, it in function depending on the properties i'm customizing the attribute and of course inside the button i will uh, write the name of the game props.name here and props.name there so the simple button is just that hmm? uh, getting the um, selected and name and rendering itself uh, as a button with a proper bootstrap, bootstrap class uh, what um, what happens uh, in the, uh, what, what does the button group do uh, the button group uh, simply receives from the constructor some properties 
and the properties uh, in this case are basically the names property which is the list of games and uh, you see that he will uh, for rendering the children so the main method here is render it will uh, just map so this that props that names is the array of names uh, that is received as a property map will generate an array of uh, jsx elements an array of of what of simple buttons so the um, button group is receiving an array of strings and is rendering is returning an array of buttons through a simple map function these buttons have of course they must have a key property because in jxx you remember whenever you create a list uh, you must uh, specify a key which is able to uh, identify the element hmm? in this case the key must just be the position 0 1 2 3 4 5 since we don't have to modify these elements we need we don't need uh, anything uh, more fancier then i in the simple button i should pass the name because it's an attribute that simple button requires i should pass the index that the simple button wants to require i will pass the selected state and which is a property that the simple button will receive so how can the button group know which button is selected and this is where state comes into play the state uh, in this case i created one chosen variable of state and i initialize that to zero here in the constructor i initialize the state with a variable chosen equal to zero this means that, that by default button number zero so the first button is selected and so i when i generating the simple button i specify the selected function uh, sorry the selected attribute as the boolean expression whether the index of the simple button that i'm generating is equal to the state to the chosen one so in the case of index equal to zero is it's equal to the sorry to the state uh, to the zero value of uh, of chosen so the first element will have selected equal to true all the other elements will fail this check and will have selected equal to false that is why the first button will come up as selected and the other ones will come up as not selected okay that was the easy part i have uh, properties which are the list of names i generate a list of simple buttons starting from the names i will provide each of them the name and a key for a good uh, practice of generating lists and uh, i decided that the chosen one should be number zero so i'm passing i'm computing the selected property by comparing the index of the map operations with the chosen value okay i created the static part of the application then i want to a uh, model how what happens when i click on poker for example so how to change the chosen button of course uh, uh, the click happens on the button so i need to handle the on click event of the button element the button doesn't have any state so the button knows it has been clicked but it cannot change its state it doesn't have any state the simple button while the button group has the state so how can a simple button that knows that the state needs to be changed change the state in a button group that is where the state lives it's not possible unless the button group gives a, to simple button a method to be called a function to be called to change the state so if a button group uh, allows his, his children wants to allow allow his children to change the state it will pass an additional property in the form of a function that the children can call whenever they want to change the state so this function will be executed in the context of the button group so the uh, simple button we will call a function in the button group and this function in the button group may change the state stored in the button group itself so uh, 
uh, the method we have a, a method oh, sorry a, a place where the event is captured and a different method where the state is updated and the update of the state um, needs to be passed down to the component where the event happens I, in our picture it's uh, something like that i modified the button group by adding a change selected function i use an arrow function in order not to we have problem with this and simply uh, change selected is a function that takes an id 0 1 2 3 and will change the state the chosen property of the state to that number easy enough so if i call that inside button group change selected 3 it will immediately change the chosen value to 3 changing the chosen value to 3 will create a re-render of the component of the button group component calling a re-render of the component will of course call again the render method that will create four different sub simple buttons and in this case the selected is equal uh, the, the selected one will be the last one number three and not the first one number zero so this is the mechanism for creating dynamic interfaces i'm changing some state the state will automatically trigger a re-render of the interface re-rendering will uh, compute some di slightly difference or maybe a strong difference it depends but in this case it's just a slight difference in the one attribute on one component and so that will show a different selected button but the problem is not this one the problem is that uh, uh, button group doesn't know when to change the selected button because it's not the element where the event happens the event happens uh, on the on click of the button so actually when the simple button creates a button will uh, we may register an on-click event handler on the button on this is a normal DOM button so it does have an on-click event all the other all the other components don't have basic events mm -hmm. uh, when the, the next week in the next lectures we will see a lot more details on forms and events and so on right now today just to understand how to mutate the state mm -hmm. um, so the simple button will instantiate the button with all the bootstrap classes and all the attributes and so on and plus the on-click event on click uh, will call so on click will be a function of course again or uh, the, the event handlers are always functions and when this function is called it will call the chain selected function here on button group and how can a simple button or, be or better a button itself call another function here on the button group just because the button group uh, copied into these props when it creates a simple button a copy of the reference to this function so button group defines a function to mutate the state and gives in the properties a reference to this function and the simple button when it creates the button the low level button will register an event handler that will ultimately call this function that is available in the properties so the only way for a lower component to change a state in a higher component is whether the higher component is passing a state mutation function that we call set state is passing a state mutation function down through the properties and from the code point of view we see that uh, button group is defining this change selected function as we decided and this change selected is copied here in a property when we create a new simple button so i'm creating a simple button and i'm giving a simple button a reference to the function to call when it needs to change the state this is just a simple prop of type function is not a prop of type string of type uh, object it's just a prop of type function and the simple button is receiving this property and is using that to register an event handler so where do we register that here when i create the button secondary so the not selected one i register the on click handler on the button so i'm creating the low level button 
by register an event handler that will call props.change selected. So props.change selected is the props that was actually passed here. So this change selected here is equal to this props.change selected. And uh, uh, this function is called with a parameter which is equal to the index of the button. That is why uh, we decided that, that the reason why we decided to that each simple button should know its index value. Otherwise, I would have to pass the name and then the, the, the button group would have to, to search the array for the name and uh, hope there are no duplicates. Uh, that's it. So uh, on, the, on the bottom, we receive the event and we call a function. This function is a function that has been given very kindly to us by the button group that will finally change the state. And uh, uh, so we have this uh, uh, final behavior that we, we can see also running because I, I already opened this uh, application in the browser and we see that uh, when I click on a button, uh, its state will change. Actually, uh, we, we know that all the buttons are being recreated, but uh, the, the, only the DOMs of the small modification will change if we open the inspector and uh, the components so you see that we have uh, the buttons group here and we see that the button groups receive some properties and as a state uh, chosen equal to two the simple button zero receives uh, its index zero name chess uh, is the zero is the one uh, st selected false okay and uh, it receives a copy of the change selected function and uh, the difference is that button two is as selected equal to true but all of them all of these four buttons received uh, uh, a copy of this function that we they will call when they are and the, each of these buttons doesn't have any state of course hmm? so this is what uh, uh, the the application is doing behind the scenes so we, you can you can have a look at this code. It's very simple. It's the minimum example that I could uh, uh, imagine uh, where this uh, state mechanism is being used. Uh, next week uh, we'll we'll spend much more time in reasoning about uh, where to put the state, how to update the state, and so on. Uh, but uh, I wanted just uh, to 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 show you how how the state is working with this simple example. Um, you see that this is a bit complex because you have, you have a lot of pl to plan ahead uh, you need to design components which are their properties and which are the state uh, that they they have and also which is the state of a component or, or what are the state change requests that a component may want to ask to an upper component mm -hmm. so uh, the the suggestions of the uh, react uh, documentation is to try as much as possible to avoid state uh, first, we decided that uh, we we are happy if we have many many components, uh, small ones, okay, and uh, we try to make uh, most of them stateless. So most of most components will only work with properties, and only a few of them will have really a state. Uh, um, usually, uh, stated components are, are faster to use, faster to write, uh, easier to debug because there's no dynamic behavior in them. We ju they just render. And it's easy to implement also because we just declare a function. And the operation that we all, um, often do with React is the so-called uh, state lifting. So we see some state uh, in a set of components, uh, and in order to manage the state, we, we decide to move the state to an upper component. So you, we move the state up, and then we send down functions that may be used to ask for these state modifications. So we pass the state up and the state modifications down. So the state value down using the properties, which are read-only, and the modification functions also down to allow the children to change the state. This is the basic mechanism. By itself, uh, it may become a bit confusing if you have a lot of state variables in many components, a lot of functions to call. And next week, we'll try to uh, 
to reason about uh, um, a, a bit of some order methods to manage all of this but i think that for for this week we already have uh, uh, enough uh, enough material uh, in the next uh, lecture we'll see just an exercise where we try to apply all this context on our uh, simple exam score exercise thank you good evening